Good day. I am going to <clears throat> go through two sets of gastrointestinal drugs and discuss their pharmacology, particularly as they pertain to their use in the emergency department. This lecture will focus on antiemetics, and the next lecture we'll talk about drugs used in peptic ulcer disease. So our first case is a 68-year-old female patient who comes to the emergency department with vomiting and she's known to be on chemotherapy. I'd like you to pause the video and try to think of the different drugs that you may use in this patient to stop nausea and vomiting and see if you can remind yourself of their mechanisms of action, their side effects, their indications and contraindications. When we're thinking about antiemetics, these are the main groups of drugs we'll come across. Dopamine receptor antagonists, antihistamines, serotonin antagonists, anticholinergics, and, and then some other drugs, two of which we will discuss at the end of this lecture. It's important to recognize that the top four groups share a lot in terms of their mechanism of action and overlap in their um, therapeutic effects and their adverse effects. We'll go through each of these groups in turn now. So the dopamine receptor antagonists, they act centrally on the chemoreceptor trigger zone and peripherally where they can increase gastric emptying and relax the lower gastric sphincter. And some examples include metoclopramide, Properidol and domperidol. Procroperazine and promethazine are also have some action in this group. As I said, there's some overlap between these drugs. What are the adverse effects? <clears throat> As with most antiemetics, there's a potential for extrapyramidal side effects such as acute dyskinesia, ecathesia, and Parkinsonism. And with chronic use, they can cause tardive dyskinesia. They can prolong the QT interval and therefore um, can make patients prone to arrhythmias. Other effects include hyperprolactinemia, which can lead to um, gynecomastia and lactation, increased appetite with weight gain, and insulin resistance. Second group are the antihistamines. These inhibit H1 receptors and can act centrally on the area for strema and vomiting center as they do cross the blood brain barrier. This includes promethazine, diphenhydramine, and also there's some of this activity with diaminhydronate. What are the adverse effects? Well, again, we need to think about anticholinergic effects which include depression and confusion, dry mouth, and as with all anticholinergics, we should use these drugs cautiously in elderly patients. They too can cause a prolonged QT interval with tachyarrhythmias, and they do have an effect of inhibiting some other drugs like tramadol, codeine, or tamoxifen. And again, as with most of these drugs, they do have extra pyramidal side effects. The 5-HD3 antagonists <clears throat> block the effects of 5-HD on the chemoreceptor trigger zone, the area post trema, and areas within the fourth ventricle. And they also have a peripheral effect on the vagus nerve. They are particularly indicated with post-operative nausea and vomiting and chemo and radiotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. Of course, what we're thinking about is drugs like ondansetron and granisetron. Some of the more common but mild side effects include headaches, fatigue, malaise, and constipation. They can cause drowsiness, agitation, urinary retention, skin rash, and changes in liver function tests, but these side effects are less common. And rarely, 
much less commonly than the other groups. They can cause extra pyramidal side effects. What about the anticholinergics? Well, these act centrally again on the chemo receptor trigger zone and the vomiting center, and also peripherally where they dry secretions and they reduce smooth model muscle contraction. These include hyoscine, scopolamine, and diamond hydronate. They're particularly indicated in motion sickness and post-operative nausea and vomiting. Their main adverse effects are anticholinergic, dry mouth, dry skin, midriasis, and particularly in older patients, um, confusion. They also have cardiovascular effects, including prolonged QT interval with the um, accompanying arrhythmias. Let's look at two other antiarrhythmic agents. First, dexamethasone. Dexamethasone is particularly indicated in chemo and therapy induced nausea and vomiting, post-operative nausea and vomiting. The mechanism of action is unclear. But when used in this setting for a short period with low dose, um, the side effect profile is low. The other new drug is cannabinoids, um, which can be specifically indicated in chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. We're already targeting the CB1 receptors, um, and they may have a direct effect on the 5-HT1 receptors as well. Of course, with these drugs, there's always a risk of acute intoxication, psycho and psychosis, and they can cause tachypharmia. So that was a quick look at anti-emetic drugs that you might encounter in the emergency department. As always with our pharmacology lectures, it's worth going over this and reading these drugs in a bit more detail before your exam. In the next lecture, we will look at drugs used for practical disease. Thank you.